we're going to be talking about transplanting a hosta today. And first thing we're going to do is go over the tools. I think it's a good idea to have the tools out and ready before you begin a job. You never know when you might need something. And uh, if you're in the middle of it, you got to run and go get it. Uh, that's not good. Uh, so we got a variety of shovels here. This is one of my favorite because you can, you know, get right down in and slice off. Um, this is kind of a wimpy shovel that I use for smaller specimens. So maybe uh, if you wanted to carve off a piece of um, iris or something from another plant. Um, you know, sometimes you hit tree roots. And so having a little pruner available, bypass pruner, that should be clean and sharp, uh, is helpful to break that off. And then just a variety of other stuff. Sometimes, oops, over here, uh, to really get in and pry up something, you need a full-sized shovel. I'm going to let Jeanette talk about her favorite shovel now. This is a spearhead spade, and this is my favorite shovel because of the tip. Being very narrow, you can get into smaller spaces. Um, it has a, a nice ridge here for um, stepping on and, and really getting your leverage and then also it is a shorter model so those of you who are vertically challenged such as myself um, that has been very helpful as well getting into tighter spaces where did you get that at Jeanette um, I got this online mm -hmm. um, so it's spearheadspade.com all one word okay it looks like that has a really good handle, so you're not going to break yeah. it. Right. So it's a reinforced fiberglass like, for a minute. Sometimes you have a small shrub, shrub or tree, and these are for lifting. So you can put it under the root ball, and rather than bending down, you can just pick it up like this, and there's actually two of them. And so if you had a small shrub or a tree that you wanted to transplant, you can work that underneath. And then you have two people, one on each side, and lift it up, saves on the back. Um, today we're just going to be moving a few feet, so um, what I generally do is just put it on a tarp and drag it to where I want it, and then we're going to plant it. Uh, some other stuff I have on hand, uh, Osmocote I love. I get the Osmocote Plus, so it has micronutrients in it. Uh, and then I've got some sifted compost here that I made, so that's good to have. And then for this Sum and Substance Hosta, you'll see pictures of it uh, uh, during the program. Uh, but um, we're going to put it in a pot for a year, this pot right here, so that it can get reestablished. There are some maple trees and there's a, a butternut tree which has juglon and fortunately hostas are fairly tolerant of juglon. I've tried to get something to grow in this spot and it really hasn't done very well because of the butternut tree and so I'm hoping that it will do a little better. But just to give it a good year of uh, to get it reestablished, we're going to put it in the pot and then I'm probably going to next spring take it out of the pot and stick it in the ground if it's uh, doing well and liking it. So that's the plan for today. If you had to go a longer distance with your hosta, you might want a wheelbarrow. Uh, anything else, Jeanette? Uh, no, those are the basic tools that are needed. Um, and you just have to have a plan ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, that always is helpful. So we're going to stop the video here and talk about our plan, and then we'll come back. <laughs> Substance. You'll see pictures of it, but it grows probably three feet across. And one of the reasons I want to uh, transplant part of it is it kind of gets entangled in this rose bush that's adjacent to it. And sometimes that it'll actually shred up the leaves from the uh, thorns on the rose bush. So I want to kind of go that direction with it. So it means we're going to take off about half of the hosta somewhere in here with uh, Jeanette's wonderful tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, then hosta roots go way out. Uh, and so we'll want to go out somewhere in here. And if you prune some of the roots off, that's not a terrible thing because it encourages 
more roots to grow, but I think you want to get enough root mass that it uh, does okay. Anything else you want to say, uh, uh, Jeanette, no, about the plant? Usually, if you if you look at the pips, this is when they're the the hardiest for mechanical. Um, they resist mechanical damage, like dividing. Um, so this is the perfect time to be doing this. And so you just look over your pips and see where there's a natural division. Um, and you don't have to dig up a whole clump. Um, you can just take a slice off and move that and the plant will be just fine. Um, it will, will recover as if nothing had been done. So that is our plan for the day. Correct. I mean, there are a lot of people that would take a large hosta like this out, completely divided in fours, but uh, both Jeanette and I feel that it, it's uh, doing so wonderful here that we just want to trim off this section that's next to the rose bush. So that's the plan. All right. We'll be, be back at it in a second. Can I get down the size we need? We might be able to just five, two minutes. Yeah. We're, we're wide. Yeah. So. People cringe when they see you tweak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> This side here? Yeah. yeah. We're doing a good job teasing those roots out, aren't you? Yeah, this is a great tool for that. I don't own one of these. Yeah, that looks pretty nifty. Okay, we'll post our tools on the website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or on the, yeah. In the video when we do the long feed. Spray Oops. Jeanette. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna melt. <laughs> That's already I'm been always... proven. <laughs> That's the community garden. Yeah. I'm always the dirtiest garden. <laughs> I don't know how people stay so clean. They're not working hard enough. Yeah. be to carve another piece off, but I'd rather not do that. Yeah, yeah. no, I can't understand why not. Right there. I just wonder if that's going to fit in there. I'm going to get a stick and we can measure it. Oh, is it gonna fit? Oh. And that's for pit to pit. Okay. Plan B, let's plant it. 
my my bullet. Oh, hello, uh -oh. Mr. Worm. And it's a real worm. Oh, that's good. A good worm. Oh. I think we should just plant. Yeah. That's yeah. one thing you have to be always prepared for, change of plans. That's true. Yep. Yeah. And we'll just have to post an update about how it's doing, yeah. if it works. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, right here. Oh. I'm going to go. <laughs> I know people that that paint their oh, yeah. candles. Oh, yeah. Colors. A good you idea. You want to grab there and that and we'll drag it through the gate. All right. The camera, camera woman is <laughs> <laughs> multitasking here. Sorry. Okay, so it's going in this spot. Correct, and I did a little bit of prep work, but we'll do a little bit more. Okay. You want to get the compost? Okay. Yeah. Fair amount of tree roots. Like I said there's a butternut, and then there's hops here, which We'll probably dig into a hop here. Surely those things are something. I think you want to usually dig the hole a little bigger. Yes. Yeah. Again, because those roots grow more That's outward than downward. Hops, vine root. Wow. They have a huge network of. Even this is hops. Oh, wow. We'll try to reduce the competition. <laughs> so now can you plant that root that you cut of the hops mm -hmm. and will it grow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try not to be too close to that because we know this thing gets big. Yeah. don't think we would have, the only option we would have had would have been to uh, divide it again and I just did that. They have a nice big specimen here. Tree roots aren't too bad, it's hop spot. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. How's that looking size wise? It's pretty good. Just the hard part is depth. And we're going to put some compost in the bottom of the pool. Deep enough? Yes. Yes. Again. And if you put compost in your planting hole, um, it, it's amazing how little hostas need in the way of fertilizer. What's more important for them as they mature is water, water, water mm -hmm. um, over fertilizer. So um, some people will use Osmocote as, as Tom does. Other people will spread Milorganite mm -hmm. in the spring mm -hmm. because that also is a deer deterrent. Yep. Um, and the ideal time to do that is as those pips are just starting to emerge. Um, otherwise, if you're dealing with leaves and trying to scatter that around the plants, it gets a little a little messy for the gardener. So, um, in fact, my plans for this afternoon are to um, get my malorganite out and into the garden. Seeing deer out there? Uh, yes, we have a herd of 
There are 10 of them this year. There were eight last year, and they're roaming already. Mm. So. How's that look? That looks good. All right. Let's see if we can get it in there. And have you thought about which way you want? I think uh, turn it like that. That's my idea. All right. And we'll get in there and check the depth. That's just a little deep. What do you think? Uh, by the time we water things in, maybe just do a little bit. It might be a little shallow. So, just thinking of these surface bits. Have you? Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, a little bit high. Yep. Just move to the side and dig it out a little bit. I have gloves over there. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, there is a saying, use. for a $5 hosta, build a $500 hole. Um, I think it's with peonies, too. If you have a $10 peony, build a $100 hole. So um, it does make a difference. Better? Let's use the shovel method. Still a little shallow, huh? Yep. I'm gonna go get my little shovel. I think that's just the tool I need to do here, rather than my hands. <laughs> Maybe your gloves. <laughs> well, a little late now. And now is a good time to be sharpening tools and oh, yeah. oiling and yeah, all that. And probably kill me, but use my damn Gordman as my tool sharpener. Uh. <laughs> I've advertised it for the whole gardening world. <laughs> is it better? My phone is not turned off. That is better. I think it's deep now. <laughs> no. No? Okay. I think we're, I think we're good. Because you can, I mean, you can cover the tips a little bit. And I think it's new. better to have a well for watering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when you um, freshly plant these, seeing how we're going to be getting frost and stuff still for a while yet, should you cover this every night? Or when it's gonna snow, or? So, um, in the life of a hosta, this is when they are um, the, the hardiest that they're right. ever gonna be, is when they're in a tight pip. And so freezing temperatures, frost, if you're in the pip stage like we are, nothing's needed. Okay. When they're most vulnerable is as later. they're just starting to unfurl okay. because that frost will collect on them and then sure. the leaves are toast. So year. it's not going to bother the roots then? No, now, the roots will, be, the roots be, fine. will be fine. Okay. Yep. I think the other thing about uh, this step is it does subside a little bit. I can always adjust. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. can add I to can or... Soil away, or yep. put soil on as yep. the, it settles in. Yeah, because it will settle a little, but I think. And I can just okay. drag it down the hill. But then I'll go get my garden right. Because I have all, I said, have all your tools. <laughs> I'll let you guys talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, um, this is an ideal time. The second most ideal time is 
end of August, beginning of September, mm -hmm. um, about six weeks before our, our first hard freeze, um, because they start to go a little dormant at that time, and if you, especially if you have a big specimen, that's the mm -hmm. best time to move that. Sure. Um, and, you know, like we just demonstrated, you don't have to dig up the whole root ball right. um, in order to, to divide. I'm glad it's a beautiful day. It's gorgeous. Now, do you want to water it every day now for a little bit? Um, yeah, if you don't have natural rainfall. Um, and again, with, with hostas, they benefit from a deep water rather than subsequent shallow watering. Sure. Um, about an inch a week, which is pretty standard for okay. perennials in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but um, if you can water more, you'll see bigger hostas. Sure. So okay. I'm just going to keep sure. this little bit of soil right here. So like I said, we can, if it subsides a little bit, we can adjust. Um, but we also have to go back over we left the hole. Yes. <laughs> and uh, fill Cover that, that in. Up. And I'm going to use compost there because it's right next to my rose bush. But I don't want to go straight down to it. Get some, drag that pile back, put some regular soil on it. Saving me. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have some substance that's generally pretty sun tolerant, but I've had some sun scald here. Mm. So I planted this plum here, hoping to help give that. it a little shade. Yeah. One of the myths of hostas is that they're shade loving. They are shade tolerant. tolerant. So if you want big hostas, you, the more sun you provide oh, okay. and water, the bigger they're going to get. Okay. Um, now your some are more tolerant than others. So right. So your your blues. Um, what makes a hosta blue is the wax on mm -hmm. the leaf, mm -hmm. and the sun will burn the wax off. Oh, so if sure. you want blue hostas, um, those shade. definitely shade. Um, hostas with white, a lot of white in mm -hmm. the center of their leaves. Be careful with sun because that will burn out the mm -hmm. center mm -hmm. of the leaf. Sure. So the more white, the less sun they can tolerate. If you are fortunate enough to have a hosta that is fragrant and mm -hmm. they bloom really late, like for us, late August, if you have a fragrant hosta, more sun, the better. Um, but those are usually green, solid green. So, um, you know, depending on your taste mm -hmm. um, and where you can situate it, um, fragrant means sun, and um, greens and yellows are sun also. Let's look okay. at those hostas on, I don't know what the name is. Rhinelander, the names changed. Where the investment banker is there across from Kids Corner? Oh, and, and oh, they're out in yes. full sun. Uh huh. Yeah. There's no shade there and whatsoever, and they look beautiful. They're beautiful. Yeah. Yep. I don't know what kind they are, but I'm just going to dump a little bit more compost. Okay. Well, the ones that I have to dig up were in front of my aunt's house there, and those were always in sun. Mm hmm. Um, they they did burn. They do burn sometimes later. I feel like, but that could be because it's not enough water, because it's right. in the front yep. of the house. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, it's it's amazing when you, like if you purchase Hostas online, mm -hmm. toward the end of the year, there's disclaimers on their website that say, these are really tired because we've grown them in the full sun. Oh, You know, sure. to get them up to size quickly. Right. And so when they get to you, they're tired. Yeah. And so they're not, you know, they may have the crispy edges. And right. Right. some of the leaf burn out on the white parts yeah so um if you understand that then yeah. you get that it's no big deal yeah yeah but it's scary to see if you've never seen that before yeah yeah <laughs> the first dose of water one that's over there should be pretty good because we didn't really disturb its roots, but we'll right. start oh, watering sure. that right away. Jeanette says water, water, water. Yep. And that'll also help it settle and right. then we'll I need know. to rake some more dirt in I can. Mm -hmm. Then I have what I want to divide. Here. And uh, daylily. I might as well show you what we can do here. There's, I don't know, three or four of them here, and I want to keep moving them down the row here. You can see Jeanette and I are doing another program on when to do cleanup. <laughs> Be they're, nice now, you both <laughs> sides, but you'll hear from both of us. But obviously I don't do my cleanup until fall. And so we're gonna this is a, a taller bee lily that shoots up. And then uh, these blue irises are they bloom at the same time and it really is oh. a nice color combination. Like I said, I kind of just kind of want to move these down the line. Get uh, Jeanette's handy dandy shovel here. And then just cut that one in half. And uh, day lilies, tough. Day lilies, you yes. You can't kill them. So, where would you like the. Just right. Just right in the middle yeah. here. I didn't hear any crying. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I'll show them my little fall, day lily uh, fall planting where I didn't quite get it deep enough. I have to adjust it. But they're really a tough plant for transplanting. So what I like to do is kind of, if I can, twist and shout right in the middle of the clump there. Well, you're going to have to get over here to see okay. tree roots or something. And then right behind you, and let me get started on that All right. iris, and I'll get this planted. Amy will have to be moving from person to person <laughs> to get us in action here. So this is a Siberian mentor? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you'll notice with Siberians, they will tell you when they need to be divided. Um, if we weren't doing this um, on our own whim, if you have Siberian irises where the center is completely dead and you have all of your new growth in a circle around it, then it's telling you, I need to be divided. So in this case, Tom, was there a particular way you wanted this yeah. to go? Get her in half. Okay. And Siberian irises have extremely fibrous roots. They do. They and are. so sometimes what you need to do is dig up the whole clump and actually take a hacksaw or a sawzall. Yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't bring out my favorite tool. I should. <laughs> what I have for the difficult ones. Yeah, because even though this one isn't that old. You can pull it all off. Yeah, I have to. Oh. How deep are you digging the hole for... Oh! Marble! 
There was a kid in the, living here in the 50s. <laughs> yep. Well, again, I think you always use the, I use the shovel method to see if you're about where you need to be. And I think That's about good. Again, these guys are so tough. Yeah. I'm surprised I didn't have that full out here. It is. There's a laugh when you see it. <laughs> how hard packed everything yeah. is in there so you usually need a lot of muscle <laughs> which I don't have <laughs> but I can at least get soil off the roots here Ah, uh -oh. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I also have this little saw, which is often helpful in a plant like that. Actually, I oh, think sure. this is the one I, I don't know. I'll I let you use. do the honors on that one. All the sharp the roots we had yeah. to go through in two the seconds. Away. Yes. <laughs> Don't need no accidents. around this one. All right. That's another worm. Oh good. Very good. <laughs> Regular worm. Yep, not a jumping worm. No, this is not a jumping worm. We would all be very sad if the, we uh -oh. found that right I'd now. Be moving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? We'd be right there would be you. tragedy. <laughs> What are you doing over there, Tom? Digging the hole for the iron. Okay. I'm just trying to bring this down in here. There's all things that I do got in here, but that's the weed. Yeah. I kind of like both a juga and then. Uh, oh, well, the sedum? No, that's uh, all the may wine they make out of it. Uh, the sweet woodruff. Oh, yes, yes. Because they out the creeping Charlie. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. So if I have a spot where there's a creeping Charlie problem, find a juga and sweet woodruff. Oh. Uh, it kind of does battle. I'm not saying it wins, but. Right. Helps. Again, I. Like a lot of the stuff, these iris are pretty tough. 
Any time pulse left? Yes. I think the last thing I want to go show my dilly that I dug out last fall and it's just a little too high. So we won't adjust it right now, but I'll have to dig it back up. It can take multiple transplanting. Mm -mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Okay. And we throw in pots as well if you need to hold it oh, over. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of people, like we said, do that with pastas. And yep. When they just they uh, go shopping and they got to have it, but they don't have the spot yep. prepared, you just yep. pot it up and save it for a few months so you can get the grading. Or garden. a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I have a couple of those. Or half a decade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Four years where I have that example. Maybe fall, I was cleaning up or doing something. Oh, I was pulled out um, a big plant there and I transplanted it, and you can see it is just too high. So I'll have to dig that bit just an inch or two lower. Okay. Oh, but shovel. look how well it's growing, even yeah. though yeah. it is yeah. higher than yeah. the ground around it. Yeah. Pretty tough. All right, everybody. All right. Anything else? Last minute comments? You know, we were going to do uh, at the community garden rhubarb. Oh, but mm -hmm. I mean, that's very similar to everything we've done right now. I don't know okay. that we need to go over there unless you guys want to. But. It's very similar. It does have a tap root that's a little different, I suppose. Yeah. We'll think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Or I could just, uh, I could do it when I'm there with the other gardeners and just take another video and we'll yeah. uh, oh, piece okay. them together. So together. You guys you guys don't have to do it today. We'll just, uh, okay. next time there's a nice day over there. Because it's, yeah. those are even a little further out than a lot of stuff. In there. Rhubarb, if they do freeze, you really shouldn't eat it. Oh, okay. Because the toxics, yeah. toxins are, when it's freezing. Forced into the stem. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, uh, if you do get a late frost and your rhubarb leaves frost, you should pick all the stems and let it start over. Okay. Uh, mm. Yeah, mine's pretty big already. Toxins. Even if it's an established plant, you need yeah. to do that. They usually, I mean, most plants know when you know they've mm -hmm. ad adapted to the spring yeah. and they know but every once in a while you get one of those crazy cold days yeah yeah uh, where it freezes them and everything that we've talked about is pretty tough uh, even the hostas you know, i've seen them all leafed out and they'll take yeah you know 28 degrees yeah and not not be harmed by that but uh, Okay. In the fall, they tend to be going down already because the days are becoming shorter. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, when they start turning yellow and gold, and yeah. that's, that's their their way their of telling sign. you that the mm -hmm. season is over for them. And mm -hmm. So when we do our Zoom meeting on this, those of you who thought we did things all wrong, <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us what you would have done. Yes. <laughs> comments <laughs> are welcome. We're, yeah, we're, we're open to comments, <laughs> but, yes. you know. Yeah. <laughs> There's, with gardening, there's always multiple ways to do everything. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. The shovel. You want to be... Have the... You want me to do this? You want me to do the... Oh, you want me to cut the artery here, huh? Yeah. Okay, so... Got a division here. Gloves on for hand protection. I have such a lovely <laughs> neighbor with this Harley Davidson. Yeah. <laughs> Try Stephen. <laughs> All right, so as Tom said, we're going to start, well, what we'll do is we'll kind of start in the middle and come across and then we'll circle around our actual root system. You can hear it actually uh, yeah. cutting through the root. Yep. <laughs> Let's 
How long has this been here, Tom? Oh, oh that's a good question. I'd say seven years. It's a long time. Oh. There's one of those tree roots. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> now the fun begins. Alright. Yeah. Oh, there we go. You get the line started, I can always come in and try to get okay. through some of those other roots. Alright, so I think that's our line. right there you can feel it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna circle out, start going around. Is that looking okay Jeanette? Yep. We also have to be cognizant of the pot we're trying to get it into. Right. And it's okay to, to you know, take a wide stance with it now. We can always take off and put back what right. isn't needed. That's a big chunk. Maybe have to get two shovels in there and I'm gonna go for the long handled shovel now. Long handle. Because you can get better prying on it. Yep. So shovel has seen major work over the years. <laughs> but you can get a little bit more leverage on it. My creeping Charlie. <laughs> We're getting there. Oh, yes. Three roots that we had to break through. Oh, yep. It wasn't the hosta roots. No, it wasn't. No. <laughs> and you can see some of the crown here, but a lot of the roots are, are here and intact. All right, let's drag her out.
but it is. I was composting. <laughs> and you know what doesn't compost? Peach pits. Oh. Huh. And you know what else doesn't compost? I couldn't believe that compost. There was avocado shells in there. Oh, oh yeah. Avocado. I've heard that, that they don't they compost. They just don't compost. Yeah. No, that takes a long time for them to break down. So in order, obviously, in order to get this in that pot, I'm going to have to shake some of the dirt off. Yell at me, Jeanette, if I'm doing something you wouldn't. No. Nope. So, one thing to note about the way hostas grow is their roots are shallow and they go out, like we talked about. So, um, they will take quite a bit of damage to their root system, mm -hmm. but if you need to do that, um, you have to really keep in mind what time of year you're trying to divide. Sure. If your plant is fully leafed out and you try to do this and you reduce that root system, then you also have to cut some leaves off. Right. Or those roots won't be able to support the foliage um, if you left it intact. So that is something to consider um, if you're forced to move a large hosta in the middle of August and easy. Mm -hmm blazing heat out. Mm -hmm. We're fortunate in that we're moving at a good time. I have a really good irrigation system. I use river water so I'll be able to make sure it has plenty of water. Now my only question about our plan. Are we so ever it's going to be able too to fit big. That in that yeah. You know if we do a combination of washing roots and knocking the soil off yeah, I might have to divide we it again. We may have to do that. We may have to do some root trimming. Okay, we can wash. I can bring the hose around. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the plan. I just got to be ready to adapt. <laughs>